So good morning. I'm back in the woods. As you can see, I'm trying to continue my quest for woodland autumn pictures. I've come up in the car about 40 minutes from my house. I don't, gonna, I'm not gonna reveal exactly where, um, cause this is an ancient woodland. Um, something I've been researching and we came up on Wednesday to have a look at it. Some of the oaks in here are over 400 years old. I'm talking really quietly because there's some deer around. I've just seen them in the distance. Now, um, it's about 15 minutes after sunrise. So the light's gonna be low and I'm actually in the middle of the woodland here, but I was hoping for a little bit of mist, a bit of atmosphere, and I think I've got a little bit of it, not as much as I'd hoped, but a little bit. So I'm gonna enjoy shooting in here. Uh, I'll put my hat on, but it's getting a bit hot, so I might have take it off, but there's some lovely old silver birches in here, some beautiful old gnarly oaks, some really interesting trees, some holly, lots of these, this bracken and fern on the ground, which is starting to turn color. So, um, Let's see what we get. There's another wood actually, which you can't get into, but there's a fence goes along the side and some lovely old oak trees over there. So um, I'm gonna start inside the wood, get some things here. And this has caught my eye, the colors on this tree here. So I'm gonna set up and I'll talk you through what I'm seeing. With woodland, I've learned over the last few weeks that what you need to do is just don't rush. Also, because the uh, woodlands tend to be really kind of crowded and messy and not obvious. Sometimes you just need to sit down and just take a minute and just enjoy and then things start to appear. Certainly to me anyway. Now the scene behind me, which is slightly out of focus but I'll show you in a moment, but we've got, I think this is a rowan tree. It's a very young one. And it's starting to change colour. And then behind it, old oaks and some fallen trunks and I love this bracken in the foreground. I love the green still but there are touches of colour, some yellows and browns and then to the back framing the trees is this kind of mint green um, look. A little bit of sky showing but it's not going to detract too much so it feels very kind of um, a place where you'd find pixies and fairies and things and I love that. I think that's beautiful and cozy. So I've got the GFX. I'm gonna raise it up um, just so it's a little bit level, more level with the with the rowan tree here uh, and do some shots. So I'll do the photographs now and then I will show you what I've got. See what you think. Just adjusted the exposure a little bit. Um, ignore the view from the camera. I can't get Billy up as high as Albert, but if we look here, I've just moved the main subject, which is which is this little rowan tree, slightly further to the right. So we're on the third tier. Um, we've got the leading line into this misty bit of the background. A nice bit of wood here on the floor. There's a bit of mess around this side here, but I'm actually gonna crop that bit off. So the, the image is gonna finish roughly where that oak tree is. Um, I've adjusted the polarizer. We've got a five second exposure. I've gone to F7.1 because um, I'm just opening the aperture because I want to get this bit here out of focus a little bit, which is easier with a medium format camera. So the main bit here is gonna be sharp and then we're gradually gonna tail off. It also means I've got a slightly faster shutter speed, but it doesn't really make a difference because it's five seconds anyway. So let's shoot that again. And that image is gonna come up on the screen now. Okay, so we've got another scene I've just come across. What I like about this one is the, we've got some silver birches and you can't go wrong with woodland photography with silver birches, can you? Um, these have obviously bits have fallen off it. It's kind of um, leaning against each other, a bit of a tripod thing going on. But in the distance, we've got some lovely yellow leaves of so some silver birches that are starting to go autumnal and a lovely old oak tree. 
and some gnarly bits and it's in a gap and it's almost framed by this bit of silver birch. In the understory we've got the ferns and the bracken which are going green and brown and various colours. Um, there's a little pinpoint of light which is the sky but I'm going to put that behind the oak tree because um, I want that kind of darker feel. I don't want the eye to be drawn straight to that so I'm going to work this scene for a bit. And as I'm standing here, actually, it is interesting because as you stand, you see other things that you want to put in the composition. I think the way to work this is to go in close and then gradually come out. This is, this is with the zoom until you find bits that kind of work. So what is the main focus is this. And then I'm adding bits in to the composition until I get to the stage where I don't like something. Then I'll stop. Um, the other way to do it is to go wide and gradually work your way in. But my eye tends to see things that I like. I'm seeing things in the, as a background, which is really important. Um, so I will, I will start narrow. I'll start telephoto, gradually wide angle until I get a scene that I'm happy with. I'd like it as wide angle as possible because it gives lots of things to look at. It's interesting. But uh, looking good though, really enjoying it already. So let's have it, let's carry on with this and I'll put this up on the screen in a second. So I've come across the most magical scene in front of me. Absolutely beautiful, loads of old oak trees, standing proud. This is going to be a panoramic image, so I'm, I'm going to shoot it um, 35mm, which is equivalent to about 28mm, and see if I can get it all in. But what I'm probably going to do is shoot this portrait version, or somebody around, um, portrait version and stitch it together. But it just looks amazing. I'm really, really happy with this scene. Uh, it would be even better with a bit of mist, but I think if I work quickly, there's a, maybe a hint of it. Um, but at least we'll tell you what it's like as a composition because I know exactly where this boy is. Now this particular bit of the wood, this is the really old bit and these old trees deserve protection and there's a fence, this is all private land. Um, there's a farm at the end of here so as far as I can go is that path there because that's now private. Um, but I'm not going to show you this until I've shot it and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it so let's do that now. Actually, before I do that, I thought I'd just talk you through how to do this panoramic. Obviously with a phone, you just swipe it, but with this, with this camera, things you need to remember, manual focusing, otherwise, as soon as I touch it, it will focus again, and that will adjust the perspective a little bit, and it will be hard to stitch. So manual focusing, I'm focusing on the main subject, which is gonna be a tree on the right of the image, um, right third. So I'm already in my head picturing what I want, and I wanna put something at the end, something at the start. I need some interest in the middle. I've got a nice balance here. So um, I've already imagined what it's gonna look like. I've got the tripod level, so there's a spirit level on top of the tripod here, which you can't see, but I've adjusted the legs till that the bubble's right in the middle, and then, that's allowed me to sweep across with it still being level. The next thing I've done is I've made sure the exposure is pretty even. Um, it's about three quarters of a stop brighter on this side, but that's fine because once it's blended, I can just dodge back a little bit. I can just put a, um, a grad on the in Lightroom just to hold it back a little bit, which is what I'll do. So I'm happy that I've visualized this is gonna be lovely. I'm getting a little bit of flare in from the top left where the sun is. So I'm just holding my hand over. Now, sometimes that encroaches into the top of the image, but actually that's not a big problem on a pan because I am gonna make it long and thin. So um, it's definitely gonna be a pan. It's still looking lovely. It would be even better with mist, but it looks beautiful. So you can see right through this lovely old forest. So um, I've positioned the camera so that I can see every single trunk and every single trunk has got kind of an even space between it. There's a balance between the left and the right. Uh, this looks lovely. So I'm really excited about this one. Let's get it in the bag.
So what I'm looking at now is, I mean, this is all in the, over the fence. I'm not gonna go any further in, but these silver birches look absolutely gorgeous against the old oaks in the background. There's some sky in, which is not ideal. So it may involve a, a shoot when there's some mist because it would look better. But what I also like about this scene is, or are, the ferns on the floor on the under canopy. They're going brown and there's some yellows, um, some different color greens. And then you've got the light off the side of the silver birches, which are really interesting shapes. So it's a contrast of the young ones and the old ones and the light, and it just looks lovely. I'm gonna probably shoot a pan with this and then crop it as a 16 by nine, as I tend to do in woodland, because this is the interesting bit for me, not the sky. But it looks lovely. It's just a beautiful, beautiful scene. So. I've got the polarizer on the front just to take the glare off. It's not doing a great deal, but it certainly is working. It's certainly making the colors richer. I can see it, you can't, but here I've just got the glare off these ferns disappearing, so that's made everything a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this now and I'll show you the picture and see what you think. So I'm gonna call it a day there, I think, and carry on heading northwards to my next base. I've really enjoyed the shoot. If, if nothing else, then at least I know my way around these woods now a little bit more. It's the second time I've been. So um, there are also bluebells in May in this wood. So this is gonna be awesome location to keep revisiting, really, really enjoying it. Uh, so until next week then, look after yourselves and see you soon.